my friends, it's Laura. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be my February TBR. So these are all the books that I'm hoping to get to in the month of February. February is of course Black History Month. It's also the month of love. I would love to get to some romances uh, this month if I can. I have a pretty packed month for it being the shortest month of the year. Um, I have a lot of plans. I have a lot of things that I wanna do. So I don't know if I'm gonna get to any romances, but I would like to. Um, also want to try to prioritize books by black authors. Of course, I read books by black authors all year round, but in celebration of Black History Month, I wanna prioritize them more this month if I can. But there are some books that I did not get to off of my January TBR, so I'm just gonna kinda of roll them over into February's TBR, so I'll mention them briefly. Let's start with those. So first we have Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo. I'm holding it the other way around because it's been brought to my attention that the the dead animal on the cover is is quite traumatic for some people. So, but just know that this is Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo. I didn't get around to reading this. I did reread Ninth House in January, but I didn't get to Hellbent. So this is definitely one I want to pick up in February, probably one of the first ones I pick up in February. Uh, Dead Dead Girls by Nikessa Afia. This was for the buzzword prompt for January, which was uh, life and death. Didn't get around to reading this one, so I'm putting it on February's TBR. And then we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I really do want to read this. I am obsessed with the idea of cozy fantasies, especially after reading Tress and the Emerald Sea this month. Um, or in January, loved it, loved it so, so much. Uh, so I want more of that in my life. I need more of that in my life. So I definitely still want to get to this one. So it's going back on the TBR. And then my nonfiction that I was supposed to read in January didn't get around to that either. So that's also going back on the TBR that has been there, done that. And I didn't write down the author's name. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but you can see a picture of it here. I will be hopefully reading this one in February as well. Okay, getting into the main TBR, I have an anticipated release that came out today, the day I'm filming this, on Tuesday the 31st of January, and that is Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final book in the Last Hours trilogy, part of the Shadowhunter saga. I love this series so, so much. I love these characters and I'm very excited to see how this series wraps up. Cassandra Clare's endings are always great. They're always great. They're always emotional, drama filled. I love them. I love them. So I definitely want to pick this up and read it. I'm planning on doing a couple of vlogs in the month of February. So the first one is another series binge vlog. Uh, my first series binge vlog should be coming up after this video, so you'll see that. But for February, I have decided to go with the Dreamblood duology by N.K. Jemisin. The first book being The Killing Moon, the second book being The Shattered, or The Shadowed, not Shattered, The Shadowed Sun. I have no idea what these are about. I just know that it's N.K. Jemisin and I have really been wanting to get into more N.K. Jemisin. I've only read the Broken Earth trilogy and The City We Became by her. So I want to read more. I want to read all of her books. But it's a duology, so it should be a quicker one, even though these are a bit chunky. This says, in the ancient city-state of Gujare, peace is the only law. Upon its rooftops and among the shadows of its cobbled streets wait the gatherers, the keepers of the peace. Their duty is to harvest the magic of the sleeping mind and use it to heal, soothe, and kill those judged corrupt. But when a conspiracy blooms within Gujare's great temple, Ihiru, the famous the most famous of the city's gatherers must question everything he knows. Someone or something is stalking its, my dog shaking, <laughs> stalking its prey, both in Gujare's alleys and the realm of dreams. A hero must now protect the woman he was sent to kill or watch the city be devoured by war and forbidden magic. It sounds good. It's N.K. Jemisin. I mean, it has to be good. I feel like nothing will compare to the fifth season, to the Broken Earth trilogy, but it's N.K. Jemisin, so it can't be bad. So I'm excited to give these a read and to vlog my experience. Another vlog I'm planning to do in February is the first in this classics remix series that I've been wanting to do for a while. So there is a whole series of these remixed classics written by different authors that I'm very excited to get into. I have this one, which is So Many Beginnings. This is a Little Women remix by Bethany C. Morrow. I've never read Little Women. I've not read the book and I've watched one adaptation, which was like the old one with Winona Ryder. 
and I loved it. I remember watching that a lot when I was younger. So don't have a ton of experience, but I am going to be reading for the first time Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I have this beautiful paper mill press classic edition and then reading this comparing them seeing how I enjoy them I'm nervous I'm nervous because you know that classics don't tend to work for me that well but I want to have a good foundation of what the story is like so that I can pick up on all of the references and similarities and the way the author decides to change things in the remix I'm very excited about this I'm hoping that it will go well, <laughs> but we shall see. Then we have The World We Make by M.K. Jemisin. More M.K. Jemisin on the list. This is the sequel to The City We Became, which I really enjoyed by her. It's about New York City and the concept that cities are alive and we have avatars, human avatars that represent the city and its interests and New York City being New York City has six instead of the usual one. In the first book, they came together to defeat this evil that was trying to destroy New York. And I'm excited to see where things go in the second book. I don't know if I should reread the first book to like remember all the things that happened if I need to. If anyone has read both books, can you tell me if I would benefit from a reread? Because I know there's a lot of detail that I forgot. The thing that, that stuck out to me the most was the characters and how much I loved them. And one of the characters, of course, being New York City herself. If you have read both, tell me, should I reread the first one or can I just go into this and be okay? Another reread and series continuation is the Supernatural Investigations series by B.B. Alston. So the second book has come out. It came out last year and I still have not read it, which is ridiculous because Amari and the Night Brothers was one of my favorite books. Um, this is a middle grade series. We're following Amari whose brother goes missing and the case has kind of gone cold. The police really aren't looking for him anymore, but she is determined to still find her brother. She ends up getting this suitcase delivered that has an invitation to this Bureau of Supernatural Investigations where she decides to join to see if she can find out what happened to her brother. This was, this is my favorite middle grade ever. I love it so, so much. I love Amari. I love the magic in here. I loved everything about this, everything. So I'm very excited to reread it and then read Amari and the Great Game, which is the second book. Everyone who has read Amari and the Night Brothers seems to absolutely love it, just like I did, but I haven't heard anything about Amari and the Great Game. How are we, how are we enjoying this one? Guys, someone tell me. If you've read it, let me know how you enjoyed it. But I will be reading it in February and hopefully loving it just as much as I did the first book. And then finally we have This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. So Kaylin Bayron is the author of uh, Cinderella is Dead. Is that the title of it? Which I really enjoyed. I really liked her writing style. So I'm excited to read another book by this author. And this one seems like it will probably be even more up my street. This is about a girl who has botanical magic. I don't know if you guys know this, but like I'm obsessed with plants and gardening and herbs and I love the idea of plant magic, the witchy vibes in here. I'm very excited about it. I think there's like an apothecary as well that she inherits from her aunt. Her aunt, yes. Briseis's aunt dies and wills her a dilapidated estate in rural New York, surrounded by plants and flowers. And I'm pretty sure it also has an apothecary. This just sounds so, so good. This is also a duology. So if I end up reading this and loving it, I'm going to immediately continue into the second book, which I don't remember the title for, but I'll put a picture up here. I do not own it, obviously. I'd have to go get it. So hopefully I will have time after reading this to go pick up that one. Another series that I could potentially finish in February. So that is pretty much everything on my main TBR. I'm not trying to overwhelm myself and I still want to leave some room for mood reading. I did notice that in January, I read a lot more slowly than I usually do. And I don't, I don't know if that was because I was a little bit busy in January, more focusing on content and getting videos out because it's been so long since I've actually been consistent <laughs> that I was just really focused on that in January and that kind of took away from reading. I don't know, but it has taken me longer to get through books. I've just been taking my time and really enjoying it, despite the fact that Goodreads keeps telling me I'm like three or four books behind schedule. It's okay. 
So we'll kind of see how February goes, but I would like to read some romances, like I said. And if I have time, if I have time, this is not something that I'm going to finish in February, but I would like to at least start The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan. This is book three in The Wheel of Time. I read book two back in December and I really enjoyed it. So I want to continue on while things are still fresh. I really, I'm really excited by the way things ended in book two to pick up book three and see how it goes. This is a good 577 pages and The Wheel of Time books usually take me a little bit more to get into or a little bit longer to read um, and to get into really because the the density of it um, but I enjoy my time with them a lot and I really enjoy the audiobooks because they're narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding who are who are the ones who narrate all of Brandon Sanderson's books and I really enjoy their voice and I have come to love them because of all the Sanderson books that I listen to so hopefully if I have time I will also start The Great Hunt or not The Great Hunt The Dragon Reborn The Great Hunt is book two <laughs> but that's it that's all I'm gonna mention I have other ideas and, and things that I might want to do this month but we'll just have to see how the month goes and how my reading speed is this month because I'm not going to force myself to read when I don't want to. I'm not going to force myself to read faster <laughs> when I don't want to. So yeah, we'll just see how it goes. But that is all of the books I am planning on reading. Talk to me down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Have you read any of these? Are you excited for me to read any of these? Let me know down in the comments. You know I love hearing from you. But that is going to be it from me today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.